هلا زهرة أهلين ترى كل حد محذرنها أن أنا أخوف <تصفيق> that I'm scary أنا I'm intimidating and uh, I hope you don't think so uh, I hope you know that the idea is just to get to know you some people yeah. cry some people don't you don't have to cry um, hopefully I don't cry no, I don't think it's about hopefully. I think it's about if somebody feels like they want to no, cry. No, just being honest. So I want to start with your childhood. Although I still think you're extremely young, <laughs> but yeah. you have done a lot. Yeah. So let's start there. I mean, when you think of it, how do you see it? The first, now when I just said, you looked here. Yeah. What did you think? Of my childhood? Yeah. What feeling did you get? Happy. I was just, I was a very happy child. Um, I was shy, um, very, I would say outgoing, but at the same time I was shy. I wouldn't trust people so easily. Like if I know you, I wouldn't stop talking. And if I don't know you, I'd be extremely shy. So I'm guessing you knew very few people. Yeah, you could You're say select. That. Yeah, I'm very, until now, I'm so selective. Your childhood was where? Where, uh, it was from here. zero all the way? I was born here, raised here, everything here. And you said you're half American? Yes. North Carolina? Yes. And dad is from here? Yeah. Hello. Um, you think the childhood, because the, the girl that you're describing, the shy one, mm -hmm. is it the same girl that's sitting in front of me? I changed a lot. What does as that mean? A, as I grew up and with the sport that I do, I think it really gave me the confidence. and. Right now, I can talk to people. I Like before, if I didn't know you, I would not talk to you. And now, I, I don't mind. I can talk to anyone if just open up a conversation, talk. Even if it's not about sports? Even if it's not about sports. When were you introduced to it, though? Um, so I started when I was 12. Why? Um, I watched a movie. Actually, it's a funny story because yeah, tell me. I was with my mom and my younger brother. And we went to the cinema. And we were supposed to watch some other movie. I don't remember what it mm. was and it was completely sold out. So the only movie that was playing was Ice Princess. And my brother was refusing. He was like, I'm not going to watch Ice Princess. It's a girl's movie. Yeah. And my mom was like, come on. Because I was like, yeah, I want to watch it. So then we watched it. And this and was 12? Yeah, I was around 12, yeah. Okay. And I watched it. And I was just like, the entire movie. I was like, that is, I want to do that. Mm. And my mom was like, no, no, no. Focus on school. Focus on school. But. Um, yeah, that was the moment I really, really, it's hard to explain, but I just really fell in love with that. It's not necessary, I, I can relate. I mean, my uh, movie or cartoon was Captain Majid, so that was a completely different generation. <laughs> yeah. Or So I get it. You know what's funny is that we, uh, a lot of us get inspired. So when you ask a child, uh, what do you want to be? He sees a policeman movie, he wants to be a policeman. He yeah. sees a doctor, suddenly he changes. It's very rare that it sticks, it sticks throughout. So that's from 12 till how old are you now? 24. So 12 and 12, yeah. It's a good sustainability, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so from that moment, what happened? Like maybe everybody it thought you weren't serious. Down. It was up and down. What does that mean? Well, when I started when I was 12, it was a hobby. I just did it for fun. It, I never thought I would be going to competitions and stuff. And um, so I was going like once a week to the rink for 30 minutes, just training. And um, where was this? Zayed Sport City. OK. And it was Ladies Day. So they had a Ladies Day. And I was just going there and just training. And um, I improved so much. Even with just doing 30 minutes for three years, I improved like so much. And mm. my coach was like, OK, she has a talent. Like, bring more and more and more. And it increased, increased. And then my first competition, it was in Dubai. And it was in 2007, and I won first place. And then that's was when it because it was easy? Nobody was into the sport, so you no, had it easy. No, I mean there was competition, um, yeah. but I was still a beginner. It wasn't anything serious. Hmm. The competitions here in the region, especially back then in 2007, I mean it was very basic. So I won the competition, and by then I was. Well, by the time I turned like 14, my dad flipped completely. He was like, you know, okay. You're becoming a young woman, so. You're becoming a young lady. People are going to start talking about you. He wants There's to be protected. Yeah, obviously. He's my dad, of course. I mean, I tried to say, no, I love it and blah, blah, but he's my dad, so I listened to him. And I didn't do, I, I trained, but just for fun. Mm. And there was a competition the following year in Dubai again, and I didn't participate. 
but he told me, okay, you can go and cheer on to your friends and stuff. So I went there and I still remember I was sitting on the bleachers and I was watching. I was happy for my friends and I was cheering on, but at the same time, a dad can tell when his daughter is sad. Yeah. He can tell that I was not, I was happy, but at the same time I was, Killing I you. wish I was yeah, yeah. on the ice. So he was like, I think it was just the switch that switched in his head and he was like, okay, you know what, you can start competing. There's nothing wrong with it. From today, you can do any competitions This you want. was still 12 years old? No, this was, I was like 14. It was a year of struggle. It was constantly, my mom was, yeah, yeah. And, and my mom as well. My mom was telling him, listen, she's talented. There's nothing wrong with it. And he was like, yeah, but you know, the sport, it's, it's not normal here in the UAE and she's getting older and blah, blah, blah. So, so yeah. So did you it finish was high school? Uh, no, by then I was still in school. No, I mean now, by now, like, have you done your university? Oh yeah, I'm graduating, it's my final semester. Ah, yeah. what are you studying? Environmental health and safety. And do you think it complements what you want to do? Or it's irrelevant? Honestly, um, I wanted to do something with sport, but they didn't have it here. So you are you studying because it's an insurance policy? Um, I mean, I understand, Edu in my family, it was like education is priority. It was something my mom used as well. It's like, if your grades are not good, you're not gonna skate, it's gonna stop. So I've always been a high honor student, university, I'm honors. So it's always been something that is extremely important. Do you think it's affecting the quality of your talent? Because you have to study and all of that. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it does affect it. But I also read that you train every day. I train six days a week. Mm -hmm. I have one day off. Okay, um, not, not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. Kay. But um, it is different because I train so early in the morning. So yeah. we're at the rink at 5.30, because then I have class. So, so I if have you to sleep tonight, tomorrow you're up that Yeah, early? tomorrow no, tomorrow it's Ramadan, we have it at oh. 9 o'clock. Okay, <laughs> it's a not bit too bad. Not too bad, yeah. But, um, so while fasting? Yeah, while fasting I'm still training three times a day. Morning, three afternoon. Three times a day? Yeah, morning, afternoon and evening. So you're serious? Of course. <laughs> what's, what's the seriousness for? What's the aim? Olympics, that's my goal. But of course, that's the far end goal. I have yeah. small goals set for myself throughout until I reach Give them. me a small one. Well, for this year, it's four continents. Okay. Last year, it was the winter university out in Russia. I read that in one of your uh, European competitions, you were deducted points because you mm. wore a hijab. Yep. How did it make you feel? That was the first international competition that I had, which was in 2012. So it makes it worse. Yeah. Um, but at you? the same time, it didn't really affect me, honestly. I went it to the competition. When you get deducted, do you get deducted promptly at the, at the, at at the same the time? Oh. So we skate, come off the ice, there's something called a kiss and cry. And we sit in there and your results automatically come out. So you're okay knowing that you're being no. deducted? At the, I mean, at the moment, I was still so young. I was, I don't remember how old I was, but I was still young. And I, it was my first competition. I was so happy to be there to just skate and represent my country. Mm. And I came off, I did see the deduction. I didn't know what it was for because mm. I didn't fall. So when you fall, you get a deduction. And I didn't know what the deduction was for, but I was like, okay, and we just left. And then that same day we had um, dinner at the hotel and a group of judges were sitting on the side of the table and one of them comes to my coach. My coach was Romanian at that time. And this guy was Romanian. And they were talking and yelling, like just like serious conversation in Romanian. And I had no idea what was going on. And my mom and I are just looking at each other and, um, my coach was like, they gave you a deduction because you're covered. And I was like, why did they give me? I was so innocent. I was like, why? Like, there's nothing wrong with it. And um, I knew, I was like, okay, I understood. It's the first time they ever see a skater competing. There's no rules about it. There's nothing. So you're so, still optimistic. Yeah, I'm very optimistic person. Yeah, that will come to. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then I, as soon as I came back here, I was like, okay, that happened. But it can't happen again. Mm. So... I met people, they wanted to see it, and yeah, now no deductions for anyone that's covered. Not bad. Yeah. So you were the first to be deducted because of this? Yeah, <laughs> first and last. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Um, above being optimistic and yeah. overly smiley. Yeah. So I went through your Instagram. Yeah. It's all smiles. Is it fake? No. So you think it's genuine? I mean, I'm not going to be smiling all the time, of course, there is some Not in real life, that would be yeah. something off ab yeah, about Yeah, I mean, you. there's some yeah. times that I'm You're not. You're always smiling in a supermarket, yeah. in a funeral. <laughs> and when I'm training, yeah. I don't smile. Yeah. But... Um, and yeah, this is like... I looked at it and I never got a, a vibe yeah. that it's fake. 
yeah. or just a show or like mm, it was more I th- I'm like okay she's happy go lucky but is it because she's naive is it because she's strong willed what is it why are you always smiling I don't know I think in I always just try to look at the positive things I mean there's no point of if something is going on obviously every time there's something there it's not going the world is not perfect there's always some something that pops up that is going to make you upset but if I focus and stress so much on that it's going to affect everything it's going to affect my life it's going to affect my training it's going to affect my university so and my personal life so for me it's like there's a solution this is what my mom taught me since I was a kid if there is a pop problem there's a solution so instead of wasting your time and energy being upset just think of the solution the deduction is a good example of that because yeah. somebody else could have made just sob yeah but then you're like i need to be the last and yeah. that's what she said i'm the first and the last yeah do you think um because you're doing something that is not popularly accepted you are passionate yeah. at 12 about something that is not common but you decided to stick and now throughout sticking to throughout and sustaining all of this right or persevering let's say because i'm sure you persevered was it easy you think no. you said a quick no why of oh, my journey has been not easy there are so many things throughout the journey until today there's so many barriers it's which one definitely is highlighted not. in your mind well i mean the beginning obviously was people's perception people's idea i mean until now some people from my family would not ex- they're like what w- telling my dad what is she doing or my uncles would be like a guy approached me at work saying why is your niece doing this and this and i think that would be a challenge because it's not only affecting me it would be affecting them as well um but at the same time My dad tells me it's fine, don't listen to them, it's okay. But I know it it does bother him. And I think for me that would be a huge that is one of the main things. Does it bother you that it bothers him? Of course. But you still but you're still stubborn and you do what you want to do. Yeah, I mean I still do it because there's nothing wrong with a woman doing a sport. There is nothing there's nothing wrong with it. Do you think the society has been understanding? I think they're understanding better. I mean, when It's I started It's a good word to use. Yeah, when I started, it was no way. No way. And now it's like supportive. Okay. It's funny, right? Yeah. It's funny how people change, perceptions change. Yeah. What was taboo 10 years ago yeah. is probably celebrated. Yeah, now. that's what I always say. I'm like, okay, I went through a million hits and punches throughout the way, but then the people coming behind me will have it. What about school? When I was in school it was even worse. I was training at I had to get up at 3:30. I was at the rink at 4:30. And and then I would go back to school. So you've been doing this for a very long time. Yeah. Okay, continue. Yeah, so and then I would go to school and I would be so sleepy. I remember my first class was English literature Shakespeare for two hours in the morning. And I would literally be sitting and I'd just be like dozing off because I woke up so early. And my friend always like trying to wake me up. Wake up, wake up. And um yeah my friends are super supportive I'm still friends they're still my best friends today the ones that were in high school So w- you would say that having strong supportive thick skinned parents and good friends or school was key to what you're doing and now Yeah this is the thing I tell people it's super important the people that are surrounding you It's for me that is like one of the main things if you want to be successful you really have to be selective with the people around you who who are the people that are surrounding you it's very interesting it's like i'm tempted to say that you seem to have it easy but i know it's a lie it's because you make it seem yeah. easy zahra yani talking to you like yeah it's chilled all went good <laughs> everything's great but yeah. it seems there's way more behind the smile and that's where i'm trying to go with this i mean and i want people to see that I'll tell you what I think about good optimistic people. I don't like the I'm crazily eagerly positive because I think it's not realistic. Yeah. And I don't like the depressed complaining skeptic, right? Um so 
I think an optimistic person who's extremely strong, who's seen all kinds of shit and challenges and toughness, but they always end up seeing the half full part of the glass rather than the half empty. That I believe is optimism at its at best. And that's where I think you are, although you're young, so we can say thankfully and hopefully don't see too many challenges, but no matter what challenges you've seen, you've chosen a tricky sport for a woman who's yeah. covered, you still choose to see the half full. And that's where I think optimism is great, rather than somebody who hasn't seen the world, but is always just smiling because he still didn't get slapped. Yeah. So that's where I want you to, to help me out. I mean, what is something that somebody said that really bothered you? Good question. Um, it hurt. I wouldn't say something that someone in particular like, said. I think for me, the biggest thing that really hurts is appreciation. For example, I go to competitions, major big competitions. I represent my country. I'm, I'm making history. But for me, the biggest thing is I get appreciated a lot more outside the country than in the country. You think so? Yeah. And you think it's changing or it's not? No. Not yet. No. For a example, lot of people blame football, by the way. A I lot of sports, even men's yeah. sports, huh? Like you talk about basketball or chess. Yeah. They'll all say the budget goes 98% to football and the rest yeah. take care. Like for me, it's, it's, it's super sad. For example, I'll give you an example. I went to Russia, okay? It was in Siberia. First time ever UAE is represented in the Winter Universiade, which is like the Olympics for, win for university students. And I went there, it was crazy. Every single day, 30, 40 cameras chasing us back and forth. The day was packed morning till evening, interviews and media. And there was absolutely barely anything here in UAE. Nothing. It bothers you? Of course. Why? Because I'm working extremely hard to do this. Not, I mean, I'm doing it for myself and I'm doing it for, I for the also country looking though, at but like at the same time, there's... I think social media is usually a, a window to somebody. You get a glimpse. I'm not going to say you know yeah. the personality, but you get a glimpse. Um, and looking at your Instagram, you're also very patriotic. Yeah. I see Sheikh, Sheikh Zayed a lot. So I don't know if you have a soft spot for Sheikh Zayed yeah, specifically. <laughs> but I saw it there. Why do, do you feel you have that sense? Although you're mixed, right? So yeah. you can say, no, I'm half here, half somewhere else. My heart is everywhere. But do you feel there's a big belonging to the UAE? Yeah, definitely. This Why? Is, this is for me, UAE is home. This is Were you brought up in a house that's very... Yeah. Mm. Not just for my dad, for my mom as well. Really? Yeah, my mom has lived here more here than back home. So for her, here is home as well. Hmm. What do you want to happen? Forget three years. This year. Yeah. 2019. What, what is nice? or would be ideal for you? I think for people to recognize my sport as a sport. Mm. How does it make you feel that you're a change maker? I mean, I don't really focus on that. I mean, for me, it only hits me when someone tells me that. I just did, yeah. Yeah, mm. that's when it hits me. It's like, oh yeah, I did. So it's and a byproduct and you're happy that it's happening. Yeah, of course. I want it to happen. I, I want it to keep increasing. But if the support is not there, I'm really scared that it doesn't. Once I stop, I'm really scared that it does not continue because I'm the one that's fighting right now to mm. for it to keep keep going. So you're afraid you can't stop because it's bigger than you? Yeah. Well, how would you describe your personality? I would say... Today. A very fun Are you? person. Yeah. People don't really see that side of it, which I think it's sad. I need to show it more. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. I think I'm a, I'm, I'm a fun person. What does fun mean? You're dancing, you're jumping, you're shouting, you're making fun. N um, you're making fun of people, maybe? No, 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 not making fun <laughs> of people. That critic? I, I don't, I, I feel like I'm just a... Prankster? I like oh. pranking people. Oh, so you are, yeah. But <laughs> okay. But, um, yeah, I always want to do like things, but not normal. I w I'm a risk taker. Like I always want to do crazy things. Like what is crazy? I'm not going to let you go easily. What is the crazy like thing? Like for example, I went ziplining. Mm. 
for me, I have a huge fear of heights. Really? I literally died. There like, was a video of you in a plane where it flipped or something. Oh, that as well. Yeah. Yeah, but that I was actually fine because I'm so short. So I was sitting and I couldn't see anything. Okay, so the zip line was a fear. The zip yeah, I got stuck halfway. So next is bungee. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. Mm. <laughs> or skydiving, they're trying to get me to do skydiving. What would you tell girls, whether Emirati, whether Arab, whether covered, whether not? Let's talk about girls. Yeah. What would you tell them? Knowing what you know up to this year, which is 24 years old. Do not give up. That's my main motto in life. Do not give up. Let's make this fun. <laughs> what do you want to ask? You? Sure. Or you ask yourself and I'll help you. No, I can ask you. Ask me. Oh. <laughs> um, not so easy, huh? When I put yeah, you on the spot. Really easy. <laughs> mm. In your opinion, yeah. what would success mean? In my opinion, what would success mean? It's very funny. See, I, li I really believe in the law of attraction. Yeah, me too. I don't believe in coincidences. Like you said your story about going to the cinema, everything is sold out, except your favorite movie yeah. or the movie that kicked off everything. It kicked off you sitting here, yeah. literally. So yeah. that moment, was it coincidence or, or was it fate? Was it law of attraction? And then suddenly decisions were being made till you reached here, literally. So yeah. if that movie you're like, no, we'll watch a comedy. All of this would not exist. Absolutely. Yeah. So the funny thing is when we talked about success, I think it was yesterday. We were sitting in my mother's garden and I said, success means different things to different people. For, and because we were talking about how parents, and I, I really like the idea of how your parents were supportive, how parents, what they think is success, they want their children to do. Because in their mind, that's the yeah. definition of success. So if a mother thinks her child should be married at 28 and have kids, and that's success and happiness, she'll always tell you, hmm, Zahra, yalla, I know you're the best <laughs> caterer in the world, but where's your babies? You know? Because in her mind... That would be my dad. In her mind, that's success. <laughs> yeah. So you can't blame her for having that definition. It's her definition. Yeah. But it's very selfish if a parent wants to bring that yeah. onto a child that probably has zero interest in that yeah. department. So I think it's very relative. But for you, what is success? I'll, now I'll use your question against you. That's a hard question. <laughs> ah, that's why you asked me. <laughs> yeah. What is it to Zahra? And it might change. It might evolve. Yeah. Why are you waking up every day, Zahra? Just sleep. I ask myself that Just question sleep. all the time. You know, have <laughs> Every sahur, single morning. Have some Mindy and sleep. And Ugh, don't, I can't eat barely anything as well. So that's okay, a whole so why other do story. You do it? <laughs> uh, You're doing it for something. Yeah, I have a goal. Since I was, it's, it's funny to say, since I was not, I wouldn't say 12, I would say 14. I knew exactly when I want, what I wanted to be, where I wanted to be, you how know, to do it. The unfortunate thing, a lot of, People struggle with that. I'd meet people in their 30s and they say, I don't know what my passion is. I yeah. don't know what my goal is. It's really so you're very lucky that at 14 you knew and you... I'll ask you another question. Do you think not having a financial backing, yeah. because it's a not so attractive sport yeah. at the moment, can kill your dream? Definitely. Really? Yeah, I would do it for fun, obviously. Even yeah, when but I so if you don't competing. get the enough funding, your dream is done. Is that scary? Very. I worked that it's not only about since talent, I was right? I worked my butt off. But you have insurance policy. You have a bachelor's degree. Yeah, but that's... No, of course, I'm, I'm not telling you to do that. <laughs> I'm the guy who will never tell you to do that. <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of scary. I sacrificed so much. To what did you sacrifice? Family time. Mainly family time. Hmm. I'm never home. Ever. You have siblings? Two brothers and a nephew. Mm. Yeah. Do they but know you? Of course. Mm. <laughs> I mean, they know me, yeah, but I'm glad that they're supportive as well. Mm. Because if my family, my brothers were not supportive, it would be difficult. Very, Friendships, very difficult. Friendships, love, all of these are compromised because of your skating? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Even your best friend hates you or she understands? No, no, she, does, she understands, obviously. She mm. understands. But at the same time, it's like... So you think it's a high price? Very. Because especially with the sport I do, we have to train six hours a day. With school? With university, yeah. 
So, so you see, this is what I'm trying time. to get at. Why the hell are you doing this? Because I love it. Yeah, that's not enough. There's more. A lot of people love a lot of things. People I think like as well, at the same time, milk. I'm also, like, I'm doing it, obviously I love and everything, but I still need to prove to people that Why? I can do it. Because so many people are telling me I can't do it. Uh -huh. We're getting somewhere. Yeah. So many people tell you you can't do it, which makes you want to do it more. Yeah, that's how I am. If someone still tells me you can't, I'll prove to them that I can. That's why you did the zip line? Yeah, that was <laughs> the scariest <laughs> thing of my life. So you yeah. want to always challenge yourself? Yeah. And you want to prove people wrong? Yeah. So success, we come to this question. So what is success? Proving everybody wrong? For me, I would say success would be just to have the sport not die. If by the time I'm 40 and the sport is still continuing, like it's still growing, it's still represented and it's growing and it's becoming bigger and bigger. For me, I'll be, okay, I was successful mm. because that is what I'm trying to do. It's not just about competing. It's not about the medals. It's not about, it's, it's a lot bigger than just the medals and me skating. Let's say that. It's mm. a few more questions. What if your dad comes to you crying? Okay, really, seriously imagine it. Men don't cry too much. Yeah. He comes to you crying and he says, it's really difficult, Zahra. I, I tried, I really tried, Zahra, but yeah. everybody in the majlis is making fun of me. At work, they're like, it's ridiculous. You have no shame, you're not jealous. You need to take care of your daughter better. She's embarrassing us in the family. I need you to stop. Would you stop? I think, yeah, I would do it for as a hobby. I would switch. You would? I would switch. You would break it for your dad? Yeah. Especially yeah. my dad. Ah, soft spot. Yeah. Interesting. I would still do it. I mean, it's part of me. I would still do it, but not as a... You think you'll be satisfied? I don't think so. I would not be satisfied. I think you'd be I would depressed. Be, I would be miserable for the rest of my life. But you sacrifice that. Yeah. For me, the happiness of others is super important. But that just scared you. You shook. Yeah, obviously. Mm. Yeah. Your mom is a very important role in your life. My as mom sacrificed so much. Nikki was telling me. And yeah. Wh who's your mom to you? My mom is my hero, literally. Why would you say that? She sacrificed literally everything for me. Times with my brothers, she even she barely sees my brothers. She's always at the rink. In the summer, she travels with me three time, three months. Doesn't see my dad. Doesn't see my brothers. Hmm. Competitions. She's always there. Does she enjoy it? I would say no. It's probably super boring for her, because <laughs> I'm the one that's training six hours a day, and just, she's just has nothing to do. So why is she there? Supporting, loves me, I guess. You guess or she does? No, she does love me. Good. <laughs> Otherwise uh, she wouldn't how do would that. You, you feel indebted to your mom? Yes, definitely. What would you f think that you need to do? Does it drive you to succeed? That you need to, You she deserves you succeeding? That's the minimum you can give back? Mm. Not really. I mean, of course, I want to do my best for her. But at the same time, my mom always tells me, you're not doing this for me. Like, until today, she's like, if you stop enjoying the sport that you're doing today, everything is gone. You're stopping. You want to quit, you quit. Only if, not because I'm tired, I don't want to do it anymore. Not like that. It's just, if you don't enjoy it, don't as enjoy long it. as I'm enjoying it. And she's been consistent since you're 12. Yeah. Really supporting from the Super beginning. Super supportive. Even when I was in school, she was at the rink at 4.30 in the morning. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's a sitting, clap. She's like sitting and freezing. The rink is cold. That's a clap hot. to her. Yeah. And she Not would drop easy. me off at school, pick me up from school hmm. at the rink till night. Very interesting. Yeah. It's, I always find it interesting, the role of parents or a guardian in the role of a big star or athlete or professional. 
it's extremely interesting and it seems to be a huge in ingredient yeah. i mean for me i would say as a person i don't talk so much about i would say my success i, I don't talk so much about the struggles that i have i don't talk about i'm a very i just let and it obviously in obviously i saw that now and i just try to show everyone with i would say my training competitions with actions mm. i don't say much are you expressive with your mom um do you tell her how much you care for her yeah of course that's where what would you tell her now that because today i know she's away yeah i was expecting to see her yeah i wish she would be so here. what would you tell her what would you really tell your mom from your heart that i really love her like i probably don't say it as much but i really really love her and really thank her for everything that she's done for me not just skating wise since i was a kid mm. from the day i was born until today so that's beautiful yeah well you see it wasn't too tough no no you took it with flying colors my last question just came to mind does it annoy you that people are clapping for you because you're on a magazine or you're with nike or just now they're clapping oh wow we always knew you're such a star yeah. does it bother you that now yeah. they're clapping yeah but that's how life is mm. you think it's fake some could be fake or is it because you're trending now maybe uh, let's see after a month probably they won't be clapping no why not well it doesn't matter if they clap or not those people don't matter is the ones that you said that stuck with you since yeah the close ones matter so well good luck sure. thank you Thanks. nice talking to you you too and thank you for your time thank you